Soraya Trays excitedly ran through the halls of the Jedi Temple. Her auburn hair and new Padawan braid flowed behind her as she made her way toward the meditation chambers. She wasn't sure if she had ever been so excited in her entire life. She was finally a Padawan. She had barely slept the night before her initiate trials and was worried that her performance in lightsaber combat had suffered as a result. But she had still been chosen by another Jedi. She hadn't actually met this Jedi, but she had been given his name. Caius Monarch. As Soraya entered a corridor containing several meditation chambers, she slowed her pace to quiet her footsteps, a common courtesy amongst Jedi in this part of the temple. She was told to meet her new master in one of these chambers. She quickly checked her chrono as she approached the chamber. She was nine minutes early. Soraya took a deep breath and opened the door. Like most meditation chambers, it was fairly plain. Two cushions were on the floor of the small room. The shades were closed, letting very little natural light into the room. On the cushion farthest from the door sat a human male with shoulder-length black hair. He was clean-shaven and looked fairly young. He opened his eyes as Soraya entered and looked at her. Master Caius? The man grinned. A pleasure to finally meet you, Soraya, he said, his voice lightly accented. Have a seat. Soraya returned the smile as her excitement reemerged. now that she knew she was in the right place. She closed the door behind her and sat on the cushion across from Caius. She reminded herself to sit upright and make eye contact with her new master. Relax, Caius said. There's no need to be so tense. I've already chosen you as my apprentice. You don't need to impress me, Soraya. Soraya let out a deep breath and relaxed slightly. Sorry, master. I'm... Just a bit nervous still. It's all right. I was planning on some basic meditations together to help get to know one another, but I can sense your restlessness. It's perfectly natural. I once felt the same way when I first became a Padawan. Soraya noticed his smile falter for just a moment as he paused, but it returned when he resumed speaking. Perhaps some more physical practice will help work out the nervousness first. Would you care to partake in some lightsaber sparring first, Soraya? Soraya nodded. Yes, Master Caius, I'd like that. Caius smirked. I suppose I need to get used to being called Master. Still feels strange, though. He stood and started toward the door. Come now, let's find somewhere to spar. Within minutes, the two had begun training. Soraya led with a somewhat cautious offense, mostly utilizing basic techniques from the first form of lightsaber combat, Shi Cho. She still wanted to make a solid first impression, so she was strategizing. She was going to start slow and basic, and then switch to something faster, maybe some of the Ataru sequences she had been practicing. If she was lucky, she could catch Caius off guard. She knew she couldn't beat him. He was a knight, and she had only just graduated from being an initiate a few days ago but she might be able to give him a run for his credits. Caius wasn't making it easy, though. He was clearly holding back as well. His blocks and parries were simple, only occasionally pushing her back to stand his ground. He had yet to display any actual offense. Soraya wondered if he preferred a defensive form, or was simply holding his cards close to his chest. As she switched her footing to switch tactics, Caius quickly capitalized on the opening. He held his lightsaber in one hand and pushed hers to the side. He ducked suddenly and delivered a kick that swept her legs and sent her crashing to the ground. Then, as she fell, he used his free hand to take her lightsaber from her grasp. By the time Soraya realized she had lost, Caius had walked halfway across the room, examining the hilt of her lightsaber. She stood slowly, slightly embarrassed at having been caught off guard like that. She was already feeling self-conscious after being defeated in the initiate tournament, and felt disappointed in her own performance in this duel as well. I'm fascinated by the design of your hilt, Caius said as he turned back to face her. Soraya was confused for a moment. The first thing he said after disarming her was something that felt irrelevant to the duel. She wasn't sure if that was a good sign or a bad one. Was he disappointed in how she did? Did he have nothing to say about her skill, or lack thereof? Or was she just overthinking it? 
Most Jedi construct hilts that are symmetrical on either side. Yours, however, has purposeful uniqueness. For instance, I notice the space between switches on one side allows you to grip your small hands between them, while allowing easy access to the activation button. If someone else were to use this lightsaber, the grip would be uncomfortable and impractical. And these etchings in the metal are unique as well. What inspired them? They're symbols, actually. It's the phrase, There is no chaos, there is harmony, written in several languages. It's my favorite part of the Jedi Code. Caius smiled. I don't know if I've ever thought about what my favorite part of the Code is. I imagine it would depend on the situation and whatever part is most applicable at the time. But I admire your conviction. He approached and handed the lightsaber back to Soraya. Now then, let's begin your first lesson. How to counter an opponent willing to use dirty moves like sweeping the legs. Soraya collapsed on the floor of the training room. Her arms and legs ached from the sparring with Caius. She had learned a lot in the last few hours, and the knowledge was practical. But she was also getting exhausted. She could hear her own heavy breathing, but not her master's. Was he even tired? Have you had enough? he asked. She didn't even try and sit up and look at him. Just... Catching my breath, she said slowly. Take a moment, then. I need to step out for a moment to use my calm link. I'll be right back. Soraya heard him exit the room while she tried to slow her breathing. She didn't want to get up until she absolutely had to. The hard floor of the training room was hardly comfortable, but to her weary body it was immensely relaxing. Was being a Padawan going to continue being this strenuous? Soraya hoped she could get used to it, because right now she wasn't entirely sure if she could even successfully stand back up, much less continue sparring. Eventually, she heard the door open and close again. Still catching your breath? Caius asked. It's a work in progress, Soraya said. Caius laughed. Take all the time you need. I think we're done for the day. I've just received word from the council. We embark on our first mission tomorrow. Soraya felt a sudden burst of energy within herself as she sat up to look at Caius. What's the mission? I don't have all the details, but from what I understand, we'll be going to the planet Venzilo in the Outer Rim to negotiate and help with some political unrest. Likely nothing too exciting, but we'll know more once we get there. He tossed her a small comm link, which Soraya caught. I'll tell you where we'll rendezvous tomorrow afternoon. Get some rest, my Padawan. Right away, Master, Soraya said as she fell back against the floor of the training room to muster the strength to go back to her chambers. Caius returned to his personal quarters and sat on the edge of his bed. He took a moment to meditate on the training session he just had with Soraya. He was sincerely impressed and satisfied with his chosen apprentice. She was brimming with potential, and he had no doubt she could be a great Jedi someday. He just had to help guide and nurture her talent. She had already clearly displayed talent with a lightsaber and her connection to the Jedi Code. He wondered what he should teach her next. Perhaps return to his original plan with basic meditations together? Maybe using the Force to augment one's agility? It wasn't like there was a set curriculum for Padawans. It was unique for each apprentice. Caius thought it might be best just to play it by ear. See how their first mission played out and what learning opportunities would arise. His thought process was cut short by a knock on his door. Caius stood up as he was caught a little off guard. He didn't usually get visitors at night. He opened the door to see an abnormally tall and muscular bald human with a thick black beard standing in front of him. Caius hadn't seen the man in three years. It was his former master. Gors Rigo. May I enter? Gors asked. His voice was gruff and unpleasant. Caius merely stood to the side and allowed the hulking Jedi to enter his room. I heard you gotten yourself a Padawan now. Yes, I just returned from our first training session, Caius said. He was still caught off guard by his old master's sudden arrival. 
He was tired from the physical workout with Soraya, and now had to deal with Gores, whom he hadn't spoken to since becoming a knight. The Padawan. Do you really think you're ready to train an apprentice? Gores asked. The familiar condescension in his voice instantly soured Caius's good mood. Why wouldn't I be? Do you still doubt me even after I've completed my trials? Even after I've held my own as a knight for three years? I do. If it were up to me, a Jedi would not even be able to take an apprentice until they reach the rank of master. You're still too young to have true conviction, Caius. Caius sighed, hoping to contain his growing frustration. If it were up to you, I'd still be stuck as your apprentice, and be the oldest human Padawan in the history of the Order. Gors scoffed and leaned in, his voice quiet, because you still act like a child, constantly fixated on frivolities. You get distracted by ideas and philosophies that are beneath the Jedi. You act as if those outside the Order could guide you, rather than you being the Jedi to guide them. That is the core lesson you always failed to learn. How could you hope to train a Jedi without being firmly rooted as one yourself? There is no emotion. There is peace. Caius reminded himself of the code to suppress his anger. He and Gors had not ended their pairing as master and apprentice on good terms. It seemed not much had changed since then. Why are you here, Gors? To mock me? Or just to reassert your opinions about me? Gors waved his hand. I'm simply urging you to reconsider taking an apprentice. I have every right to take a Padawan learner. I'm a knight, regardless of what you think of me. I'm not suggesting it for your sake. It'd be a shame to waste a Jedi's potential just because you will be unable to properly mentor them. Your apprentice would be better off with another master. Gors started back toward the door. Think about it, Caius. He left without another word. Caius stared at the door for a moment before realizing his hands were clenched into fists. He had hoped by the time he met Gors again, he would have earned his respect as a Jedi. But Gors still refused to acknowledge Caius's worth. Nothing had changed. He went to lay in his bed, but found himself unable to sleep. He tossed and turned, thinking about what Gors had said. Was three years really enough time as a knight to be ready to train an apprentice? He had to be the one to shape Soraya into a Jedi Knight. Was he ready for that responsibility? If he couldn't sufficiently help Soraya grow, would it be his fault that she never lived up to her potential? His mind wandered even farther thinking of stories he had heard of how the Jedi Rail Avaros was forced to kill his own Padawan. If Soraya was killed, or if she fell to the dark side, would it be his fault? These questions pestered Caius, and kept him awake for most of the night. Soraya entered the hangar in the Jedi Temple, and according to her chrono, was only eight minutes early this time. She saw Caius standing near a Red Republic light cruiser, presumably the ship that would be transporting them to their mission on Venzilo. As she approached, she saw Caius yawn and stretch. Soraya reached out with the Force and sensed something different about Caius. His mind was restless, like a sea in the midst of a storm. He slowly turned to face her. Master Caius, she said in greeting. Ah, Soraya. Are you ready for the mission? He asked. Yes, Master. Are you all right? Soraya asked. Caius looked at her with a brief moment of confusion. I'm fine. I just didn't sleep well last night. Soraya simply nodded. That couldn't be a good sign. Was he already worried after just one day as her master? Was he questioning her skill or potential to be a Jedi? What else could have him so worried so suddenly after their first training session yesterday? She hadn't sensed his mind as being so troubled yesterday, though perhaps she simply hadn't noticed it in her excitement. Should we go ahead and board the ship then? Might as well, 
Caius said with a small, strained smile. He led them up the ship's ramp. He gave some polite greetings to a handful of crew members and the pilots as they entered. Soraya smiled and inclined her head slightly, but didn't actually say anything to them. Her mind was occupied by thoughts of her master's distress. She tried to brush the thoughts aside, but they were persistent and invasive. After a couple of minutes, they found their quarters. They had taken the ship's standard ambassador's quarters, which contained two sets of bunk beds as well as a small common area. As Caius opened the door, Soraya saw that somebody was already in the room. A bulky human with a thick black beard sat at the small table, reading a data pad. He was dressed in Jedi robes, but Soraya had never seen him before. Gores? Caius said, the pitch in his voice raising slightly. What are you doing here? Soraya turned sharply to look at her master as she sensed anger swelling within him. It was an unpleasant emotion to sense. It felt like it polluted the force around her. The sensation was unnatural and made her feel cold. The man stood from his seat and approached the two. Didn't you hear? I decided that since I don't have anything on my agenda at the moment, I should accompany the two of you on this mission. Now, why don't you introduce me to this young woman? The man, Gors as Caius had called him, approached Soraya and looked down at her. The man was tall, especially compared to her. Soraya was only fourteen, and thus still fairly short. Even so, the man was nearly half a meter taller than her. After a moment of silence, Soraya turned to Caius. He said nothing, simply glaring intensely at Gors. She figured it would be best to introduce herself, rather than let the silence hang and hope Caius would eventually speak. I'm Soraya Trays, sir. She bowed her head slightly toward him. I'm Master Gors Rigo. Gors turned his body to face Caius. The force is strong with her. Lots of potential in this one. Caius scowled at him. I was simply doing some light reading. I'll give you two the space to get settled in. He patted Caius on the shoulder before exiting the chamber. Caius continued glaring at the door, even after Gors was out of sight. Soraya could feel his restlessness worsening. Master Caius? Caius turned sharply, so lost in thought he apparently almost forgot she was there. Soraya recoiled slightly, caught off guard by a sudden reflexive movement. His expression fell after seeing her. I'm sorry, I was just... I wasn't expecting him to be joining us. Caius placed his bag beside one of the beds and pulled a small deck of cards from it. He moved toward the table and sat down. Soraya sat at the table across from him. Why did you react like that? Who is he? Caius let out a deep, exasperated sigh. Gors was my master when I was a Padawan, but our relationship has always been complicated. Soraya felt his anger subside. No, it was more like it was being peeled away to reveal pain and sorrow hidden beneath it. Old wounds were being reopened, and those emotions bled into the force around them. What happened between you two? Our relationship was always contentious. Gors and I always fundamentally disagreed on virtually everything. His views were narrow. His way was the only way as far as he was concerned. He always said I never took enough pride in being a Jedi. He shamed me for being interested in other philosophies and cultures. But it went far beyond just that. He refused to praise me for my victories, but took every chance to belittle me for my shortcomings. It was never overtly abusive, but it took its toll on me. It still does. But he at least must have respected you enough to allow you to take the trials, right? Caius shook his head. For years I felt ready to take the trials, but he held me back. He told me I wasn't anywhere near ready to be a Jedi Knight. I asked every other Jedi I knew, 
Padawans, knights, and masters alike, they all unanimously agreed I was ready to take the trials. All except for Gors. So I had to go behind his back. I petitioned the council to allow me to take the trials despite my master's misgivings. They agreed, and I passed. Gors didn't even attend my knighting ceremony. He didn't speak to me at all after that. I heard rumors that the Jedi Council quietly recommended he not take another apprentice for some time. I imagine he feels betrayed and still resents me for it. That's awful. I'm so sorry, Master Caius. We can deal with him later. If you don't mind, Soraya, I'd like to keep my mind off it for a bit. Focus on something else for now. Do you know how to play Pazok? Soraya nodded. Caius passed her some cards to choose from. I think Pazok will be a nice distraction for the time being. Soraya wished she had more comforting words to say to her master, but she wasn't sure if she had the words that could heal those sorts of wounds. She wasn't sure they could be healed at all. So she simply sat and played cards with her master, hoping her presence could provide some semblance of distraction or comfort. After an awkward day of travel alongside their Jedi compatriot, their ship finally arrived on Ben Zylo. Gors, Caius, and Soraya descended the ramp and approached the planet's ambassador waiting on them in the hangar. She was Pantoran, with two droid bodyguards armed with blasters on either side of her. Greetings, Jedi. I am Dulai, ambassador for the planetary government of Ben Zylo. Have you been briefed regarding the current situation? Caius stepped in front of the other two to speak to the ambassador. The details we were given were minimal. I think we could use a more thorough explanation. From what I understand, there's some political unrest and you requested the Republic to send a neutral party to help negotiate. If only it were that simple, Master Jedi. No, unfortunately, this goes beyond mere political unrest. You see, the planetary government of Venzilo has recently been expanding our territories. This includes negotiating with smaller tribes that exist outside of our jurisdiction and buying their land from them. Unfortunately, one of these groups, known as the Beren clan, has gone back on their deal. They have recently come into some new leadership, and now we've lost contact with the military garrison we've placed in some of their old territory. We suspect they may have launched an attack, and any attempts at communication with their tribe have failed, hence why we requested your assistance. You bought some of their lands and then installed a military garrison near their tribe? Caius asked. Do you not think they would consider that an act of aggression? Dulai shrugged. I am not responsible for such decisions, and thus I cannot speak to the thought process behind them. I am simply here to catch you up to speed and point you in the right direction, Master Jedi. So then where are we going? Gors interjected. First step's obviously going to be getting to the Bren clan, so tell us where to find them. Dulai smiled and handed Caius a data pad. This should contain all of the relevant information, including maps, the lands that were purchased, and the contracts for those purchases. The map will lead you through the Beren forests, and I advise caution while traversing. Why is that? Caius asked. There are dangerous creatures that dwell in those woods. However, remain respectful to nature, and nature shall remain respectful to you. If they don't perceive you as a threat, they will not attack. I see. Thank you, ma'am, Caius said. He inclined his head toward her and turned to Soraya. Let's be on our way, then. The sooner we get started, the sooner we'll be done, he said while staring at Gors, who was already heading for the hangar's exit. She bowed slightly as a show of respect for Dulai before following Caius out of the hangar. They caught up with Gors and had him lead the way into the Beren Forest. The trees stood half as tall as some of the skyscrapers of Coruscant. Their dark green leaves shaded the paved path from the sun hanging over them. Their massive roots twisted and intertwined with one another, making every tree seem connected. 
Soraya had never seen a forest so lush and expansive in person before. She followed Caius and Gors, but remained fixated on the nature around her. She turned to face Caius, intending to make some sort of comment on it, but she saw he was reading the data pad Dulai gave him. Is there any useful information in there? Soraya asked him. I think so. I'm taking a look at these contracts, and they seem somewhat exploitative. The planetary government provided very little in compensation for the lands they purchased. I suspect they may have been taking advantage of some sort of financial crisis within Beren Clan. You should be focusing on the here and now, Gors called out ahead of them. Speculating on the past doesn't change what they're doing now. If they are attacking, then we need to stop them. Knowing the past contextualizes the present, Gors, and our mission is to get them to negotiate, not to kill them, Caius retorted without hiding his annoyance. Her job as Jedi is to keep the peace. If they threaten that peace, then they must be eliminated, like a cancer. It is that simple. We are guardians of both peace and justice, Caius said, his annoyance now becoming repulsion. One without the other is meaningless. Gors turned around and walked quickly toward Caius, standing only a few inches away from his face. Soraya could sense hostility within him. It was a dark sensation, though she struggled to find the words to describe the exact negative emotions Gors exuded. The Jedi are justice. We are the enlightened few guided by the Force to show others peace and justice. Wisdom comes from the Jedi. I thought a few years as a knight would have taught you this lesson. Alas, you continue your ignorance beyond your time as my Padawan. Perhaps your apprentice should listen to a real Jedi, like me. Soraya saw Caius's hands clenched into fists at his side, and she could feel darkness rising in him. She could tell things were about to get a lot worse if Gors kept provoking him. Enough, Soraya said. Master Gors, you have no right to talk down to my master this way. Regardless of what you think of him, no Jedi should talk down to another like that. Gors scoffed. Your own apprentice had to step up to me for you. Pathetic, Gors said as he turned back and continued leading the way. Soraya approached Caius and nudged his arm. Are you okay? She could sense the anger within Caius somewhat deflating, though still residing within him. I'll be okay. Thank you, Caius said quietly. I'm sorry you had to see that. Was he always like that? Caius shook his head. He was rarely that confrontational or overt. But sometimes, yeah, that's what I had to put up with. Let's try and avoid engaging with him like that if we can. Yeah, maybe we should walk a bit further back, Soraya agreed. She reached out with the Force again, trying to sense Gore's emotions. She could definitely sense his arrogance, but the dark emotion boiling within him still eluded her. She didn't have as much experience sensing intense negative emotions. You can only learn so much about that within the controlled environment of the Jedi Temple. They continued down the path for several hours, the light gradually fading as clouds darkened the sky. Thunder roared in the distance as an approaching storm made its presence known. Eventually, the three Jedi came to an obstruction along the path. A thick wall of vines, vegetation, and shrubbery barricaded the paved path. Is that mentioned on the map? Soraya asked Caius as she looked over at his data pad. Not that I can see, he replied. Let's see if we can find an alternative path around it. Surely there was a path around it to get supplies to and from the garrison. Suddenly, ahead of them, Gors ignited his lightsaber's blue blade and began slicing through the greenery. Gors, what are you doing? Caius shouted. Destroying what stands in our way, he called back. Remember what Dulai told us, Soraya called out to Gors. We must show reverence to these woods. Gors finished cutting a hole through the natural barricade large enough for him to fit through. He turned back and began to approach Soraya. Two things, Padawan. First, 
It is not the place of an apprentice to talk back or question a master's actions. Second, a Jedi's instinct supersedes the supposed wisdom of those without our gifts. Take these lessons to heart, as your master did not. You will not speak to my Padawan this way, Caius said. Soraya's hand fell to the lightsaber clipped to her belt as she felt a disturbance in the Force. Something in the woods felt provoked and was rapidly approaching them with malicious intent. Master Caius, something's coming. I sense it too, Caius said as he drew his lightsaber and ignited its glowing blue blade. Soraya activated her green lightsaber in turn. Gors raised his blue saber as well. A moment later, several beasts covered in black fur emerged from the woods and charged toward them. They each had two heads and three tails. Gors rushed forward to directly combat them. Caius stepped to the side to draw some of them away from Soraya while she held her ground. Two of the creatures went for Caius, two stayed to battle with Gors, and two charged towards Soraya. Soraya waited for one of them to make the first move, holding her lightsaber's blade forward to protect herself. As one slowed its approach, it suddenly wrapped its three tails around Soraya's wrists. Recognizing this could limit her mobility and provide the second beast an opportunity to strike, she knew she had to act quickly. She used all of her strength to fight the beast's grasp and twist her wrists, rotating her lightsaber downward. The blade severed one tail and singed another, causing the beast to release its grasp on her. As it did, the second beast leapt to strike. She pivoted and swung her blade down, bisecting the beast between its two heads before it reached her. As she turned to face the first beast she had wounded, though, it was already pouncing. It was heavier than she expected and sent her crashing to the ground. She lost her grip on her lightsaber and it fell away from her. The beast stood over her, preparing to strike with both of its heads. She raised her hands and held it at bay with the force by keeping its heads pointed upwards. It still had Soraya pinned beneath its weight, but it would be unable to bite her with either of its heads. Her lightsaber was just out of reach, but it was taking her full concentration to hold this creature at bay. After a few seconds, though, the creature stopped trying to devour her. It jumped off of her and walked to the side. As Soraya sat up, she saw Caius standing near the beast. His eyes were closed and his hand extended. She could sense the beast's emotions calming, influenced by Caius through the Force. He had slain the two beasts that had gone after him, but was trying to save this one creature from death. Death came regardless as Gors casually approached and impaled the beast with his lightsaber. No! Soraya yelled as the beast fell over. Caius knelt down and closed the eyes on each head of the creature Gors had slain. This loss of life could have been avoided, he said. You would have botched it, and I would have had to do that anyway. I just saved us some time, Gors said as he walked back to the hole he cut through the shrubbery. All of this could have been avoided, Caius shouted. Soraya could feel the rage radiating from him. Darkness pulsated like a heartbeat through the force as Caius lost his composure. All you had to do was listen and have some patience and this could have been avoided. Gors turned back, a smug grin on his face. If you had listened to me and had the patience to complete your training, perhaps you would be a real Jedi rather than a child playing one. Caius began to walk suddenly toward Gors, lightsaber in hand. Soraya quickly stepped between them and stopped her master's advance. Gors laughed. <laughs> Look at you. So quick to fall to the dark side. That anger is overflowing. All I had to do to disrupt your balance was show up to this mission. Since then, you've been angry and petulant. A Jedi should have better control over their emotions. What sort of Jedi are you, Caius Monak? He turned to Soraya. You deserve a better teacher. One who can conduct themselves like a Jedi. He returned to the path and proceeded through the hole he had cut. 
Soraya waited for him to get further down the path before turning back to Caius. He's right, Caius muttered. I lost control. He provoked you, Soraya retorted. I'm sorry, Soraya. Let's just go, he said as he continued down the path. Soraya could sense his pain as old wounds were made fresh once more. She didn't know if she should press the issue, so she just continued walking in silence, alone in her thoughts. She thought back to being disarmed by one of the creatures that attacked them. She should have been able to stand her ground against an animal of that size. Her first day as Caius's apprentice was spent learning how to keep her footing in a fight, and she had already failed to take that to heart. Caius had to step in and save her. Maybe she hadn't been sensing his emotions correctly. Yes, Gors had made him angry, but perhaps he had doubts about her adequacy as his apprentice. In fact, she felt like Caius could most likely have handled Gors better if he wasn't burdened with doubts about her. As the storm nearly caught up with them, they finally reached the military garrison. It was a small stone fort, though it had clearly seen recent violence. The walls were singed, the windows were broken, and just over a dozen bodies were placed in the courtyard. The bodies were covered in blankets, presumably some way of preserving the dignity of those who had fallen. After inspecting the bodies, Caius saw that they were all in uniform, and thus had to be the military personnel stationed here. He wasn't sure why the bodies had been placed out here, rather than left where they fell within the fort, but it didn't matter. This confirmed the attack from the Beren clan, and was sure to make negotiations difficult. Night fell shortly thereafter. Gors at one point approached Caius and requested the datapad with the map, and Caius gave it to him without a verbal response. Caius didn't want to give him the satisfaction of knowing his comments had riled him up, but he couldn't hide it. He found some barracks in the fort suitable for him to sleep in for the night. Trying to get the Beren clan to negotiate wouldn't be easy, but there was still a chance. He'd need all the rest he could get, though, and he'd have to hope Gors wouldn't make things any worse. After an hour of discomfort, tossing and turning within the bed, Caius knew he was damned to another sleepless night. The booming thunder from the storm raging outside was the only thing that drowned out the sound of the rain. His thoughts were initially fixated on Gors and the frustration that came with working with a stubborn Jedi, but his mind eventually wandered back to his doubt about his qualifications as a master. Maybe Gors was right. He had lost all control over his emotions just because Gors had shown up to the mission. Caius clearly hadn't moved on from what he suffered under Gors, so how could he hope to train Soraya? He was just an inexperienced knight. Maybe everyone who encouraged him to take the trials was mistaken. Maybe he was an unworthy Jedi. And maybe Soraya would be better off with another master. He reluctantly got up and hoped a walk around the fortress would clear his mind. He wandered aimlessly through the stone hallways. He walked around the handful of puddles from cracks in the walls and ceiling that allowed the rain to get inside. He stopped, however, when he saw Soraya sitting cross-legged on a balcony. She was facing away from him, looking outside to the storm. She remained dry, however, protected by a dome of surprisingly intact glass surrounding the balcony. He wondered if he should disturb her, or just turn back and leave her be. As he was trying to decide, Soraya turned her head and looked at him. Master Caius, is everything all right? Caius walked onto the balcony and sat beside her. Couldn't sleep. What about you? I couldn't sleep either. I figured I should take the opportunity to come out here and meditate. May I join you? We never did get the chance to meditate together at the temple the other day. Soraya smiled and nodded. Yes, I'd like that. Caius crossed his legs to mirror the way she was sitting. 
He wondered how much longer she would be his apprentice. Once this mission was over, he would help her find a more suitable master. There were plenty of knights and masters who would gladly take such a skillful young woman as their Padawan. Any of them would be better than him. Master Caius, I sense doubt in you, Soraya said. Caius smiled sadly. Are my emotions that transparent? Master Yoda told me I have remarkable empathy through the Force. Your senses are correct, unfortunately. I see, Soraya said. You have doubts about me. I've disappointed you. What? No, not at all. Caius turned toward her. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Soraya blinked in surprise. But what about earlier today? What happened with those beasts? I shouldn't have let them disarm me like that. You had to step in and get one off me. Soraya, you've been a Padawan for less than a week. I don't mind helping you at all. You're a remarkable young woman, Soraya. You kept up far better than I thought you would when we sparred, and you continue to impress me with your empathy with the Force. You're not a disappointment at all. If anything, I'm the one who's failed you. Soraya looked at him with confusion. Failed me? I thought I was ready to train an apprentice, but clearly I'm not. I lost all control of my emotions when Gors provoked me. I put you in danger by letting him take the lead on our journey here. Those sound like Gore's failings, not yours, Soraya said softly. But I should have been better. I shouldn't have succumbed to the chaos and allowed myself to be weak. There is no chaos, Soraya said. Master, do you know why I came out here to meditate in this storm? Caius shook his head. What does the storm represent? Caius stopped to think for a moment. Over 200 years ago, a group known as the Nihil utilized the imagery of storms to represent chaos. For most people, that symbolism still rings true. Yes, that's how most people see them. But in truth, storms are natural. Like everything in nature, storms are connected to the Force. While it may seem chaotic... All is as the Force wills it. There is no chaos. There is harmony, Caius said. Your favorite part of the Jedi Code. Exactly, Soraya said with a smile. You have an excellent point. The light is always there. You just have to look for it. But I've still failed you. I lost my own inner harmony. I'm a Jedi. I should be better than that. Master Caius, no Jedi is perfect. We all have moments where we aren't our best selves. And that's why no Jedi is ever alone. We elevate one another, pick each other up when we fall, and bring each other back into the light. Caius laughed. It sounds like you're teaching me, when I'm the one who should be teaching you. Who says we can't both learn from each other? Caius let out another laugh. It's so simple, but I didn't realize it till just now. I had been viewing Mastership the way Gors did. He thought being a teacher meant he could only teach, not ever learn. But learning and growing isn't weakness, it's strength. I won't make his mistake with you. We aren't just teacher and student, master and apprentice. We're partners. I look forward to learning with you, Soraya. Likewise, Master Caius. So what else have you been meditating on? I've been trying to figure out what I've been sensing in Master Gores. I spent the day trying to articulate it, and I think I finally have it. Let me guess. Pride? Arrogance? Spite. Every time he provokes you, it's fueled by spite. And what do you sense from him now? Soraya closed her eyes, concentrating on the Force around her. Caius could feel her light through the Force. He's not here, Soraya said, her eyes still closed. What do you mean? He's not in the fort. He's out in the woods. Soraya opened her eyes and looked to Caius. 
What's he doing out there? He has the data pad with the map. He's going after the Beren clan, Caius said as the realization struck him. He and Soraya both stood at once and rushed through the fort, making their way through the Beren forest. He's not that far out, Soraya said. If we run, we can catch up with him. But then what? We stop him, however we can, Caius said as they ran through the rain. But I fear we may have to duel him. Can we beat him in a fight? Soraya asked. We have to try, Caius said. This may help, Soraya said as she pulled a small stun blaster from her robes. I found this hidden in the fort. I thought it would come in handy if we ran into more of those beasts, but it may help us now with gores. An excellent find, my apprentice, Caius said with a smile. I've got an idea. I think it's about time I turn the tables on gores. Caius could see Gore steadily walking the path toward the walls surrounding the Beren clan's village, just barely visible in the distance. Gores! he called out through the rain. His breathing was heavy and his body was exhausted from the previous day's travel and the effort he exerted to catch up with Gores before he reached the village. He hoped this would work. Gores turned back slowly to face Caius, his smug grin ever present. Didn't expect you to be bold enough to catch up with me. He walked back toward Caius, gripping his lightsaber hilt with one hand. Where's your little apprentice? She's not here, Caius said. She's back at the fort. This is between you and me. So you finally intend to stand up to me alone. About time. What was your plan here, Gors? What were you going to do to that village? The Beren clan threatens the peace of this world. I'm going to eliminate that threat. By doing what? Killing everyone in the entire village? If that's what it takes, Gors spat. But it's a Jedi's duty to make that call. And you have no right to make it, Kaya said as he drew his own lightsaber as a precaution. You are no Jedi, Gors Rigo. Gors scoffed. Says the one unable to control his emotions. Caius sighed. You're right. I slipped. But I got back up. Recomposed myself. I didn't merely surrender to the darkness like you did. You've been stewing in spite and hatred for me for the last three years. You couldn't stand the idea of being an inadequate teacher. So you had to project your own weakness onto me now. Shut up! Gore shouted as he ignited his lightsaber. Steam hissed from its blue blade as drops of rain evaporated on impact. I am not weak. You are weak. You are weak for giving in to pride and arrogance rather than allowing the Force to humble you. You've hardened your heart to it instead. And now you're merely a shadow of the Jedi you once were. Gors charged, holding his blade forward to impale Caius. When Gors was only a few meters away, Caius closed his eyes, concentrating on the force. He could sense Soraya close by, hidden behind a tree. He trusted her to be able to fulfill her role in this plan, but now he had to ready himself for what came next. He had to dig deep within his own personal trauma to deliver such a scathing speech to Gors but now he had to set those emotions aside. To finish this fight, he needed balance. There is no chaos. There is harmony, he thought to himself. Caius felt Soraya summon a wave of energy with the Force, manifesting itself behind Gors and pushing his legs. He opened his eyes to see Gors beginning to topple over as Soraya had used this push through the Force to sweep his legs... Gore's lightsaber was just over a meter away from him, though he was now starting to fall backwards. This was his chance. He let the Force guide his body. All of his rage for his former master was set aside as he embraced Harmony and allowed his body to be a vessel for the Force and its will. He ignited his lightsaber with his left hand and used it to push Gore's blade to the side, leaving his body exposed. Then... 
with his right hand. He drew the stun blaster Soraya had given him and fired a shot at Gore's. The blue energy ring appeared for a fraction of a second before striking him in the chest. By the time Gors hit the ground, he was already unconscious. Caius deactivated his lightsaber and stood over his former tormentor, victorious. Soraya emerged from behind one of the trees and ran over to Caius. It worked! We did it! She said excitedly. I knew you could. I couldn't have done it without you, Soraya. We make a good team. Caius and Soraya both turned in unison as they heard the sound of footsteps in the distance. Eight human men armed with blaster rifles emerged from the woods, each aimed at the Jedi. They wore scrappy tunics and worn boots, clearly not military. Caius held his hilt in his hands, but resisted the urge to activate it. Soraya's lightsaber remained hooked to her belt, though her hand rested on it, ready to draw it if she had to. Hold your fire. A voice carrying a thick accent called out, Stand down. The men slowly and somewhat uncertainly set their weapons down. Caius put his lightsaber away and straightened up. Soraya looked at him in confusion, but also relaxed. One more man emerged from the woods, wearing a heavy fur cloak. He was young, likely only a few years younger than Caius. You are Jedi? Caius couldn't really gauge how the man felt about the Jedi by the way he posed the question, but he saw no reason to lie to him. We are, he said. I am Torin Beren, now head of the Beren clan, he said. You stopped that man from attacking us. Why? We seek a peaceful resolution to this conflict. He did not. The man nodded. I see. I will go with you to negotiate. You have proven that you value my people and our lives, and I trust you will bring that intent to our negotiations with the government of Venzilo. I will do my absolute best, Torin, but I must ask for one thing in return. Go on, Torin said. Do you have a speeder to take us back? Because I really don't want to carry him, he said, pointing to Gors. Soraya waited for Caius to return within her quarters on the Republic cruiser. He had been generous enough to let her get some sleep while he handled negotiations. While she likely could have learned something in that meeting, she was immensely grateful for being able to sleep after the absolute nightmare of a day they had spent with Gors. Caius had managed to sneak in a short nap on the speeder ride back from the Beren clan's village and was good to go after that. She had slept for nine hours and spent the last hour meditating to pass the time. She reflected on her own self-doubt that had plagued her. She thought back to the initiate trials and how she had critiqued herself on her performance, despite still being chosen as an apprentice. She had critiqued herself the same way when the creature in the woods had knocked her down. She had felt weak and useless because she was still learning. But her conversation on the balcony with Caius had opened her mind to the idea that you never stopped learning. She now felt harmony in the Force, and thanks to Caius, she felt confident in herself. She opened her eyes at the sound of the door opening. She stood and turned to face Caius. He looked surprisingly content. How did it go? she asked. It was long and tedious. There was a lot of ground to cover. The Beren clan claims the soldiers at the garrison tried to extort his village, which led to the attack. They thought the planetary government approved the extortion, hence their hesitancy to negotiate. Long story short, I helped renegotiate the contracts for their land to make sure they are well compensated and left alone. Glad to hear it, she said. She could feel the ship beginning to take off. I take it that means we're done here. Just about, Caius said. We just have one more loose end before this is over, and I'd rather not do this alone. Will you come with me to the brig? Soraya followed Caius to the cruiser's brig, which currently held a single prisoner. Caius opened the door to the cell and entered. 
A blue glimmering ray shield sequestered Gore's Rigo to one half of the room. He sat on the floor with his hands locked in binders in front of him. Coward. You couldn't beat me alone, so you had to get your Padawan to help you. There's nothing wrong with getting some help, Gorse, Caius said. In fact, I hope that you get the help you need when we return to the temple. Oh yeah, Gorse scoffed. And how do you intend to help me? I don't, Caius said. The council will decide your fate, but I won't help you. I came here to say goodbye, Gorse. I'm finally done with you. You may think you're done with me, but when you realize what an unworthy Jedi you are, you'll wish you had listened. I am worthy, because I'm done measuring myself by your standards. In spite of what happened between us all those years ago, I've given you respect you don't deserve for years. But now, I see you for the arrogant fool you are. You've attached yourself to the Jedi instead of the light, and thus you've drifted further away, becoming little more than a shadow, one that I refuse to allow to darken my path any longer. Caius and Soraya turned and began to walk out of the cell. Goodbye, Gors. Now wait just a second, Gors yelled. Don't you walk away from me! Caius closed the door behind him and left his old master alone. He let out a deep breath. Soraya reached out with the force and sensed relief and harmony within him. You did good, she said. Caius smiled. Thank you. Now then, I think we need a little break from that nastiness. Care for a Pazak rematch? You're on, Soraya said with a smile as they started back to their quarters. The two walked side by side. Master and apprentice, two Jedi, united to face whatever trials were on the path ahead of them.